G'day gamers, Ranger Tony here with another Pathfinder Kingmaker video. Today I'm going to cover the last of the Magus archetypes that I haven't covered previously, that is the Sword Saint. So the Sword Saint is a different type of Magus. Uh, you focus more on one particular weapon. Um, anyone who's played the Enhanced Edition of Baldur's Gate will recognize this as being very very similar to the Kenzai class that existed there. Um, so you are limited in that you can own you cannot wear any armor or use a shield, but you focus on one particular weapon. So you pick that weapon, you get that immediately, and you can only use that weapon. You also have uh, less spells per day than a normal magi, but um, there are some advantages in it as well, and it looks like a fairly fun build. I'm actually playing it as a companion in another uh, playthrough. So, let's get into it. Um, as you can see again, I've got to the point where I'm choosing the race here. Which races work well with the Sword Saint? Um, humans, again, are my go-to choice here. There's a very good reason for that, you'll see later, but it comes down to that extra feat. Um, at first level, you definitely want that feat. Um, to make your character that much more effective. Um, elves would be a good choice. Um, you need intelligence, you need dexterity. The hit to constitution is going to be a little bit hard because you are squishy, you don't have any armor at all, so you're relying on your dexterity for armor class as well as whatever magical items you can pick up, such as braces of armor, rings of protection, those sorts of things. Um, so yeah, the constitution hit might not be the best, but you've got the bonus to dex and int, so that's going to work pretty well. Dwarves, no reason why you can't use dwarves. Um, constitution hit is nice. You know, the constitution bonus, I mean, is nice. Um, the hit to charisma is not going to affect you because you don't need charisma for this build. Gnomes and halflings, uh, again, like with the um, Aldori Defender, these guys actually aren't too bad for this class. Um, I, I have in the past said that Gnomes and Halflings aren't good for much really apart from Spellcasters, um, but the weapon choice that I recommend in this build um, is significant enough that you'll actually do a pretty good amount of damage as a Gnome or a Halfling. I'll explain more on that later. So either of those will be fine. You'd probably just want to get your strength back to 10 so that it's not a detriment because even if you pick that weapon, if you leave your strength at 8, you're going to then do minus 2 damage with it. Um, so either Halfling or Gnome. Gnome's slightly better because they get the bonus to Charisma, um, but either of them will work well. Half Elf and Half Orc, again, being half human, they get the plus two ability to one score, like the humans do, so they will work well. Um, not a skill-based uh, class, so the focus on one skill for the Half Elf or the extra skill point per level of the Half Orc doesn't really do much for you. It's nice to have, but it's not an, uh, an essential thing. Asimir, there will definitely be an Asimir um, that you can pick that gives you good stats and has heritage that works well. I just haven't really um, looked into that yet, but I'm sure there'll be one that will work well for you. So we're going to pick human. As I said, the extra feat at first level is definitely what we want. So, Magus, Sword Saint. And let's see what the Sword Saint says. So a Sword Saint spends his life focusing his training and meditation into a rapturous perfection of the use of a single weapon, which is usually but not always a sword, channeling his arcane might through its dazzling and deadly dance beyond the abilities of even the greatest of mundane warriors. Uh, lots of flowery words, doesn't really talk much about what this class does. So the first thing that's important is the chosen weapon. You are proficient, you get basically weapon focus. As you know, this is... Um, Yes, at first level, a Sword Saint gets weapon focus with his chosen weapon as a bonus feat. So, you can pick any martial or exotic melee weapon. Um, you cannot use armor or a shield. 
And even if you were to take any abilities that give you armor or shield proficiencies, you would suffer normal arcane spell failure if you did that. So you're better off not taking any spells. Um, you get the same arcane pool as a regular magus, so I won't go into that. You get uh, the same spell combat, so I won't go into that. At first level, you also get canny defense. So when you're wielding your chosen weapon, you get... you This, this one isn't worded very well. Um, I read this differently. So when wearing light or no armor, wielding his chosen weapon and not using a shield, a sword saint adds one point of intelligence bonus, if any, per magus class level as a dodge bonus to, hit to her armor class. If a sword saint is caught flat-footed or otherwise denied her dexterity bonus, she also loses this bonus. I read that to say that for every point of intelligence bonus, you multiplied that by your class level and added that to your armor class, but you don't. Because that would mean that at level 10, if you had plus 3 to armor class, you'd have plus 30. Sorry, plus 3 to your intelligence, you would end up with plus 30 to your armor class, and you definitely don't. Um, I've only played this character through to level 2, but what it does, instead of that description, the description should be something like... Uh, you add a plus one bonus to your armor class per magus class level up to your intelligence bonus if any so at first level you get a plus one bonus at level two if your intelligence if you have a plus two intelligence bonus you'll go up to level two plus two armor class bonus if you've got plus three intelligence bonus that at level three, you'll go to plus three and it'll max out at whatever your maximum intelligence bonus currently is. Um, so the wording on there is very poor. Um, if there is something different from what I've just explained, please let me know in the comments. I haven't played this character long enough to go past my intelligence bonus to see if something happens beyond that, but I doubt it will. Um, so you do get a bit of extra defense. Basically, your intelligence bonus adds to your armor class, or to your dexterity bonus, is the better way to think of it. Your armor class bonus, your intelligence bonus adds to your dexterity bonus, but it adds per level. So at first level, you only get one bonus. At second level, you get two, and beyond that, uh, it increases as you go up in levels up to your maximum intelligence bonus. What else do we get as a Sword Saint? That's everything at first level that we get. Following on from that canny defense, later on at level 11, you get superior reflexes, where you can make a number of attacks of opportunity based on your intelligence modifier. Um, and then eventually you go up to... Uh, you, you automatically make a natural 20 uh, initiative roll every round. Um, you get the standard spell strike. Um, you only have one spell per level. Um, we see that down here. Oh, sorry, we don't see that yet. We'll see that in a minute. Um, you get perfect strike at level four, so that you can spend an arcane point to do maximum damage with that weapon, uh, which is good. At level seven, you get um, the fighter training feat, which all mag mag maguses get. Um, you get critical perfection at level 9 so that um, you add your intelligence bonus on the crit confirmation rolls um, so that makes it easier for you to confirm your crits you get lethal focus at level 13 so that even when you're flat, footing, flat footed no, when you have a flat footed opponent sorry, you add your intelligence modifier to your damage which is nice and at level 16 you can counter strike so that when an enemy successfully casts a defensive spell you can uh, attack back as a, an attack of opportunity and then at level 20 you get the uh, the same weapon mastery that most of the martial characters get so that you automatically confirm all critical threats critical critical threats sorry um, 
you get some extra martial feats here, and then at level 7, you can uh, improve your initiative by adding your intelligence as well as your dexterity modifier. Um, and then you get your bonus magus feats down there. So it's a little light on some of the mage type stuff, but m all of the bonus feats uh, abilities that you get are all focused on doing more damage with your weapon. Um, so let's go in and have a look at the build for this. Now, like I have with a lot of my builds recently in the Magus class, this really screams out to me to be a dex-based build. Um, so I'm going to start off by adding my racial bonus to dexterity, but then I'm going to increase my intelligence to 16. Um, as you can see, we only get one spell at first level and we have a maximum of six levels so we need at least 16 to be able to access all of those and then really just putting every other point I can into uh, dexterity so I'm only going, to, going to, only going to go to 18 here because if I go to 19 I don't have many points left to do much so the rest of it I'm going to put into constitution getting me up to 14 points with a plus two makes me a little bit more survivable um, and a good uh, dex bonus there of plus four giving me a base armor class of 14 but remember my intelligent one point of my intelligence bonus per level uh, will be added to that so at first level my armor class will actually be 15 at second level it will be 16 and at third level it will be 17 um, I'm assuming if I use uh, magical items to increase my intelligence, they will also count. Um, we will, you'll, you'll have to see when you play that, but that makes sense. Um, ability scores don't really come into it too much. You might want to take use magic device. Um, I tend not to use that very often, um, so I'm just going to go through and pick a few of these just so we can get through to the next screen. Okay, so what feats are we going to pick? Well, remember, we can get weapon focus, that's this one here, in any chosen weapon we want, as long as it's a melee weapon. So the first thing you'll notice, what's Bardish doing here? That's a type of spear. Why am I going to want that? Or it's a type of halberd, basically. Um, I can use battle axe. I can use, well, hang on, the dueling sword and the dwarvish... Urgush and the Dwarvish War Axe are all exotic weapons, but that's the thing. As a sword saying, you can pick any martial or exotic weapon and use it, including the Elven Curve Blade, which is a two-handed sword. Long so uh, great swords, great axes, great clubs. Uh, you can pick whatever you want. Okay? Um, but remember, this is a dex-based build. I haven't put any points at all into my strength. So if I pick any of those weapons, I'm going to get no bonuses to attack or damage with them. So that's not necessarily a good way to go with this character. Um, but that doesn't mean you don't have choices. So what I actually recommend is the first feat we pick back here is Weapon Finesse. Now, there are... The, the Weapon Finessable weapons, if we have a look at the description, are Light Weapons, the Elven Curved Blade, which we saw was two-handed, the Estoc, the Rapier, or a Spiked Chain. May be used of a creature of your size category, you may use dexterity modifier instead of your strength modifier on attack rolls. If you carry a shield, your armor penalty applies to your attack rolls. So that's fine, we don't, we're never gonna use shields. So we could potentially make the favored weapon the elven curved blade, but we're still not gonna get any damage modifier on that. So what is the second feat to take? Well, we can't see that until we take a weapon. The weapon I recommend taking, you could take the dueling sword, which you can't normally take. Because the dueling sword, even though it's not mentioned there, is finessable. But there's the one skill that you can get, which takes any one-handed 
slashing weapon and makes it finessable and allows you to apply your dexterity bonus. So let's just briefly pick the dueling sword and then we'll see that feat, Slashing Grace. So Slashing Grace allows us, when we focused on an appropriate weapon, you can stab your enemy with your sword or another slashing weapon. So slashing weapons, that includes axes, by the way. So you could add an axe in here as a weapon. It has to be one-handed, so you could do the Dwarven War Axe, because you've access to that as a... It's an exotic weapon, but you could pick the Dwarven War Axe. Right, and remember, the Dwarven War Axe does 1d10, as opposed to most single-handed slashing weapons doing 1d8. Um, and so I can still pick Slashing Grace. Right? It's still here as an available skill. Why would I not pick the Dwarven War Axe? Because the Dwarven War Axe critical range is only 20. Right? It only crits on a 20. The best weapon you can choose is the Bastard Sword. The Bastard Sword does 1d10 of damage, same as the Dwarven War Axe. It can be used one or two-handed, right? So it, it can apply for Slashing Grace, and it has a threat range of 19 and 20, rather than just 20. Only does twice the damage compared to the Dwarven War Axe triple damage, but this option will work better for you. You'll do more damage as a sword saint with the bastard sword than any other combination. If you picked great sword, even if you picked falchion, which is a two-handed sword which does 18 to 20 crit range, all right, you can't pick slashing grace with it because it's a two-handed weapon. This also proves why it's okay to be a small race, gnomes or halflings, with this build because they will just go back to doing 1d8 of damage with the Bastard Sword rather than 1d10, which is still a respectable amount of damage and frankly more than most of your um, Magus archetype builds are going to do, melee builds anyway, um, because most of those you're going to do a dex build and that means the weapons that you're going to pick are single-handed slashing weapons, um, and generally that means 1d6 of damage for them to be finessable, or you'll take Slashing Grace and you'll pick a Longsword, which already does 1d8 anyway. So, yeah, that is why the Bastard Sword works well, and it works well for any race, uh, including the small races. So that's my recommendation for the build there. What do you pick after this for, you know, third level and onwards for feats? really comes down to you, but this is a feat which is focusing on... T this is a class, sorry, that's focusing on two other things. It's focusing on initiative, and it's focusing on critical. So I would take improved initiative at level 3, and any other time you get a feat, look at improved initiative, look at anything to do with critical, adding stuff to your critical range. If you can't get any of the critical ones then, I would look at anything that gives you extra attacks. Um, combat casting is going to be a, a, a no-brainer as well because you are going to be casting in combat. Um, so probably improved initiative and combat casting would be the first two I would take. If you can't yet get any of the improved critical feats, look at getting power attack and cleave because cleave will give you extra attacks with your weapon per round um, if you attack and hit an opponent, it gives you a free attack at an adjacent opponent. Um, so try some of those options as well. Yes, you're a little bit squishy. If y You'll also want to look at things like dodge and maybe toughness, anything that can improve your armor class a little bit more, but you're also going to be keeping an eye out for any braces of armor class, whether it's natural armor class or whatever, any rings of protection, anything that you can get to bump your dexterity up or your armor class up because out of all of the martial characters if you want to call this one you're probably going to have the least armor class of them all but it'll be a challenging build and I recommend the first time you play it to play it on easy um, to get a feel for it but I think it could do well even at some of the harder levels if you're willing to put the time into it. As I said, I'm playing this as one of my companions in my main playthrough at the moment. 
come and see me on Twitch if you want to see me playing that. I'll be playing that fairly often uh, when, when I can between work and other commitments. Um, but yeah, this is, this is the build I recommend for the uh, Sword Saint. Um, if you've got any ideas of your own, please let us know in the comments. Uh, and I'll see you on the next video. Thanks, guys.